So this is human reproduction. It's for a grand total of like 37 to 43 marks in your paper one, relatively big section. So the diagram below represents a part of the male reproductive system. Give the letter and the name of the part that is used in copulation, that is the penis, produces testosterone, those are the testes. 1.2, give only the letters of the two parts in the diagram that contribute to the formation of semen. That would be D and E, D being the prostate, and F, the seminal vesicles, and B, that provide a passage for the sperm cells. Answers here are going to be C and B, C being the sperm duct, and B, the urethra. So answers were A, E, D, F, and C, B. Question two, the structure below represents a part of the female reproductive system. So let's go through A, B, C, and D first. So in the diagram, A represents the fallopian tube or the oviduct where fertilization typically occurs. B, the ovary where egg cells, otherwise known as ova, are produced. C represents the uterus, which houses and nourishes a developing fetus. Please, fetus is spelled like this. A lot of my students spell it uh, otherwise. D represents the cervix, and this is the lower part of the uterus that opens up into the vagina. So identify part D. The answer here is the cervix. State one function of part A, our fallopian tube. It's a site of fertilization as well as a passage for egg cells. So there were two possible answers there. One was okay. Describe the process of... It's not oogniosis, your Disney Afrikaans word, nie. This OO genesis as it occurs in part B. Well, firstly, diploid cells in the ovary undergo mitosis to form numerous follicles at the onset of puberty and under the influence of FSH, one side, sorry, one cell inside a follicle enlarges and undergoes meiosis. And of the four cells that are produced, only one survives to form a mature haploid ovum. Meiosis. I don't think my sister likes mayonnaise. 2.4. State one way in which structure C is suited for its function during pregnancy. Well, main one here, muscular. It can enlarge to house and protect the developing fetus and contractions during childbirth. And 2.5, a person undergoes a surgical operation to remove part B on both sides. Explain why this person will not menstruate. Well, firstly, the ovaries have been removed. So ovaries have been removed. No estrogen will be secreted. Remember, estrogen is spelled with an O. The endometrium lining will not thicken. And if there's no thickening, there will be no menstruation. And uh, no follicles can develop as well. You can just slot it in. And that's it for question two. In question four, our diagram illustrates the process of spermatogenesis and the development of sperm cells through several stages. So... Stage one is spermatogonia, and this represents the initial phase where in spermatogonia, in which the male germ cells are present, and these cells undergo mitotic divisions to produce primary spermatocytes. And the large cluster of small cells around the black region shows the undifferentiated cells. Stage two, we've got the primary spermatocyte, and this stage shows a single and large cell which is a primary spermatocyte. Their primary versions undergo the first meiotic division to form secondary versions. The cell, sh the cell shown here is in preparation for meiosis. Stage three, spermatides. So after meiosis, the cells begin to differentiate into smaller cells called spermatides. Now, I know a few of you have been referring to it as spermatids. This is, this is how you spell it. I see some crazy things on the metric group. And in stage four, we have a mature sperm cell. And this stage, it shows a fully formed cell with distinct parts. A representing the head, B representing the midpiece, and C the tail. 
So the head contains the nucleus with the genetic material, uh, genetic material, that's DNA. B, the midpiece, it contains the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria, which provides energy for the sperm's motility. Um, and the tail, it enables movement. Uh, the diagram as a whole, it represents the transformation um, with each stage showing critical changes in structure and function that is necessary for reproduction. So um, identify part A, we've got an acrosome, 5.2, uh, name the organelle here, it's the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. 4.3, give the numbers for the marula, so that's going to be within stage 3, the structure that will implant the uterus, stage 1, uh, the blastula or blastocyst, also stage 1. And 4.4, give the letter and name of the part that will enter the ovum during fertilization. That's going to be B, the haploid nucleus. 4.5, name the type of cell division that occurred to produce the structure in diagram 3. As previously stated, this is going to be mitosis. I thought it was my finger, sis. Sorry, that was such a bad joke. Question 5, the diagram below shows a human sperm and ovum. The diagram is not drawn to scale. So the sperm and the ovum tabulate one difference between the structure of an ovum and a sperm cell. Well, ovum has no tail and no mitochondria. The sperm cell contains a tail for transport and the midpiece contains many mitochondria. Uh, 5.2 explain the importance of this enzyme during fertilization. Uh, the digesting enzymes are responsible to break down the cell membrane of the ovum and also to allow the haploid nucleus of the sperm cell to enter the ovum. In 5.3, just a quick working out, please pause the video and read the question. So we need to do a few conversions here. Firstly, remember we gotta work apples with apples. So 20 centimeters is equal to 200 millimeters. So final answer, 200 over four, quick maths, and the answer is going to be 50 minutes. How does the male body ensure that the sperm cells are not killed by acidic urine as they travel through the urethra? So answer here, the prostate gland secretes an alkaline substance and that neutralizes the acidic environment of the urethra. In question six, let's quickly label everything. A is the vas deferens. Oof, I love that word. You sound so posh and knowledgeable when you say it. B, the seminal vesicles. C, the prostate gland. D, learn the spelling for this one. It's the bull burethral gland. You imagine I spelled that wrong. What a terrible bio tutor. E is the urethra. F is the penis. G is the epididymis. And H, the testes. So the answer to B, the seminal vesicles. H is the testes. The function of E is to transport semen with sperm cells or transport urine. E was the urethra. 6.3, discuss two structural, structural adaptations of the sperm cells to reach the ovum in the fallopian tube of the female. So in 6.3, the tail is used to swim and the mitochondria, the midpiece, is for energy to swim. And finally, 6.4, why do you think this could have an impact on fertility? How could it influence it? You can just read this on your own. I try to make these videos as quick as possible. So in 6.4, optimal sperm production occurs at two to three degrees lower than body temperature. The warmth will increase the temperature of the testes and sperm production will decrease. And therefore it won't be optimal and will therefore decrease fertility. So if there's warmth, it'll increase the temperature of the testes and sperm production will decrease and this decreases fertility. So therefore these conditions are not optimal. And that's it.